So I'm a longtime fan of Mabinogi, and that might make me a bit biased, but I'm just going to say Mabinogi is the most uniquely addictive and rewarding MMORPG to ever do it. And before I dive into it, I just want to say old school Mabinogi is very different from live Mabinogi, the version of the game that Nexon offers today. Um, and to experience the game as I describe it, you will need to play on the Mobby Pro client, which I'm going to link in the description. Combat in this game happens in real time, but it's quite unlike any other battle system. When using a skill, a period of vulnerability must be endured, during which the skill can be interrupted by a ready opponent. Once the skill has finished loading, it can be executed or cancelled at any time. This system lends itself to lots of emergent scenarios and moment-to-moment -moment decision making opportunities. Oh, that worked pretty well, but they're all still alive. What the fuck? Dude, it's a chain reaction! It's a chain reaction! <laughs> In Mabinogi, characters can gain all kinds of stat points through ranking up skills. The spread of these skills will quickly become both the most permanent and primary source of your character's stats. Most other stat gains come from your equipment, current level, age, title, and so on. Since there is no class finding system in the game, every skill can become maxed out on a single character. But in order to advance a skill, a number of requirements must be met, changing with each skill and rank. Most, however, involve fighting enemies, and this is where things really get interesting. All entities in Mabinogi have a combat power, referred to as CP. The CP differential between the player and the enemy determines how powerful the enemy is considered to be. When training a skill, this consideration of power is taken into account, often requiring very specific or absurdly strong monsters to be defeated as a character's combat power rises. When a character is brand new, very benign enemies can fulfill the role of any power differential, thus making the training of most combat skills trivial for the first few hours of the game. Let's freaking go! David's at rank 9. Crazy. Hunting enemies and trawling through dungeons is pretty cool, but sometimes the pace of life demands a break, and in Mabinogi, things are no different. Luckily for us, though, this doesn't mean we gotta stop improving our abilities, but that we may look towards extracurriculars to do so. I'm talking about life skills. In Mabinogi, there are a vast number of life skills that aid the player in some form or another to interact with the Mabinogi world in a unique way. Life skills also contribute to your base stats, just like combat skills, so picking up an arsenal of both is the quickest way to settle into a niche as a player. Life skills cover all sorts of topics, from refining and blacksmithing to fishing and campfire making. Most of these skills have multifaceted implications beyond their most common use cases. For example, campfires can be sat around in order to more quickly heal wounds and share food. They can also be used to light arrows on fire when performing archery, and most importantly, items can be burned over a campfire with holy water and mana herbs to extract enchant scrolls that can be used to imbue equipment with extraneous modifiers. Certain life skills, mostly those that revolve around production, require that the player expend large quantities of materials that take a long time to gather. There are many alternative methods to go about gathering or buying these materials for most skills, but often you can also accept part-time jobs from relevant NPCs during specific times of the day to receive materials from them and make items for them. And in doing this, you reap quick additional EXP in whatever production skill you use to make the item. Some part-time jobs, though, are pretty simple, like the church part-time job, which just so happens to be my favorite most of the time. They just have you go and harvest some wheat or barley or something or coax some eggs from the hens, um, and then you get four holy waters, which is sick. Remember how I said you can burn the items over the campfire with the holy water to extract the enchant? Um, for the longest time, I didn't really remember that. I would learn it, but not really remember it because holy water is also used to bless your items. And back before I played on this server, your items weren't auto blessed every time you died and got back up because we didn't all have premium service revives. So, holy water was a hot commodity just to keep your gear blessed. Now it's a hot commodity mostly to be able to extract enchants from items.
equipment in Mobnogi requires many hours of proper use to upgrade fully, so using a weapon without a blessing is basically a commitment to hours spent creating a new powerful weapon in the future. Most weapons in Mobnogi can have up to five upgrades before a special upgrade can be made using an assortment of gems, all performed with particular NPCs found throughout the world by sacrificing some amount of proficiency that the weapon has accrued through proper use. Once the weapon has received its gem upgrade, you can then use either a red or blue upgrade stone to increase its crit or min-max damage, respectively. This can be done past multiple stages, but past the first stage, the odds are no longer 100%, and with each stage come more and more egregious punishments upon failure. At some point, the weapon is destroyed altogether, so pursuing this stage of weapon upgrade is a costly endeavor. Enchants, which I've briefly mentioned, can also be applied to equipment and are unique to upgrades. Enchants come in the form of prefixes and suffixes and can be attached to equipment to modify the user's stats. When applying an enchant to an item, only the intelligence of the enchanter truly matters. The rank of the enchant skill is only relevant when attempting to succeed at burning items. However, enchants all have ranks of their own, and any enchant rank 9 or higher demands that the previous rank enchant or higher already exist on the equipment so if you want a rank 7 enchant first you need a rank a then a 9 then 8 and finally you can try to enchant the rank 7 enchant so truly a good piece of equipment with a strong enchantment is a standing achievement So I'm really just trying to list all the different ways there are to improve the strength of your character in this game right now because that concept is central to any MMORPG, but also how these different systems complement and complete one another because that concept seems to have largely fallen on deaf ears. It is true that these online RPG games are meant to be mechanisms for social stimulation first and foremost, so the narrative or world building often isn't there. And much of the time, the gameplay is a thoughtless cycle of optimal number output. There are other MMOs that have done it right, undoubtedly. WoW and RuneScape immediately come to mind, but even so, those games tend to have broadly rigid ideas of what content you can and cannot complete, based on the RPG numbers of your character card. Success in Mobnogi is largely suggested by these numbers, but very far from determined since there is a considerable depth to the PvE at every level of the game and measures that can be taken to avoid taking damage altogether. And because of this, most content in Mob Nogi is free for any player to attempt aside from a few instances of mission difficulty being barred you got this. or mandated. And this, I think, is really what makes Mob Nogi the amazing social stimulator that it is. Mabinogi is not a linear game at all, really, aside from its generation story quests, which I have conveniently avoided bringing up until now, but we'll talk about those soon. And this non-linearity lets players of all experience run into one another constantly on the overworld. And an extra body in Mob Nogi is useful, right? With the hits done and all that, so it hardly matters what level they are. You might have a lot to gain from going to help them clear some portion of content that they're stuck on, likely learn something new about the game that you can immediately investigate for yourself, how it might relate to your own goals, whether or not you want to do it, because it's probably relevant to your gameplay loop in one way or another. It's just up to you if it fits into the routine. Play more music, bro. We gotta kill the bard. Shut up. And if you want to experience Mabinogi for everything that MMOs aren't, single player narrative experiences, then you can look to the generation story quests, which will still occasionally require you to enter a dungeon alongside another player, often to roleplay as historic characters from the lore during key narrative points in battles. Some of these stories, while corny, honestly aren't half bad, with G1, 2, and 3 having a particularly compelling cast of characters, in my opinion. 
The generation quests typically all give worthwhile rewards too, from items to skills to ability points. You really can't go wrong in pursuing the narrative quests, but the game does not pressure you to seek them out in any major way. Lately, I've just been playing with one of my longtime friends from both school and Mobnogi, another friend I met on Mobnogi over a decade ago, and a longtime friend who's only recently looked into Mobnogi. But all of us have been having a lot of fun. Seriously, there's no gameplay experience quite that scratches the Mobnogi itch. I can say that much. I'd really like to make more videos about Mobinogi, covering any of these systems in more depth or talking about some that I didn't mention today, if anyone would find more of these types of videos interesting. I'd like to stream it even, but I'm not sure how encouraged that is given that the server I talked about today is not hosted by Mobinogi's publisher, Nexon. That being said, if you did find this video interesting, I really appreciate you watching it through because I had a lot of fun making it as entertaining as I could. So. Hopefully with all that being said, there will be more days of Mobinogi to come, both from me and maybe also with you. Have a nice day, you guys.